So today we're going to design this lantern, which I found on Instructables.com, and we're going to cut it out of cardboard. We'll use a little tea light, and it'll look really great when we're done. So the first thing we need to do is go to Google and search for the term box maker. And the first uh, hit is what I'm looking for. So it's boxmaker.connectionlab.org. And this is great, because it's actually going to give us the template for our ladder in itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this thing 4 by 4 by 7 and we'll use a material thickness of 0.125 and we'll press design it. It's going to want to download this file. I'll keep it in the downloads folder. And what I'll do is I'll press show in folder. So here it is. I'll right click and I'm going to tell it to open with Adobe Illustrator. So the file is opened in Adobe Illustrator and let's go ahead and click on the artboard button here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of my artboard to reflect the size of my laser cutter. So for us, make sure this chain is unlinked so that I can change the width and the height independently of each other. And for us that means our width is going to be 24 inches and our height is going to be 12. And that's going to cut off a few of our pieces, but that's fine because all I really need right now is one of these long side pieces and one of the small pieces for the bottom. So what I'm going to do is get my selection tool and I'm going to select these extra pieces and press the delete key to get rid of them because I just don't need them. They're going to get in the way. Okay. I'll go ahead and select my what's going to be my bottom piece here and I'll right click and group it so it's one piece and that will allow me to click on it and just move it out of the way here for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and select this one and I'm going to go ahead and group it as well. Next I'm going to go to the window up here and I'm going to look for my Pathfinder tool. Making sure that I have everything still selected I'm going to go ahead and press the divide which is the first button on the left under the Pathfinder's heading. That's going to change this into a path. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and give it a fill. So I'm going to click on this black button right here to give it a black fill. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and grab my rectangle tool again. I'll make sure I have nothing selected over here, so you could always do a select, deselect. And I'm going to draw another rectangle that's going to be sort of the inside of the side of the lantern. Make sure you leave enough on the outside to, that there will be enough to sort of support everything. I'm going to get my selection tool and get both of the shapes selected. And grouped up here with my Pathfinder tool, I also have the Align tool. Now, when I click on Horizontal Align Center, look at the inside shape how in relation to the outside shape. It's going to be sort of a subtle thing, but go ahead and watch it. And you see they sort of move together, so they, they both have the same center along this um, this axis and I'll do the same thing over here with vertical align center and now I know that this inner shape is perfectly centered inside the outer shape. At this point with them both selected still I'm going to go back to my pathfinder tool and I'm going to use the exclude button and the way this works is if you look at the little icon really closely what happens is it gets rid of anything where the two shapes are intersecting. Now the only place that they're intersecting is the entire inner rectangle so I'll go ahead and I'll click that and that just sort of cuts that piece out of my overall shape. I'm going to go ahead and press Control shift a to deselect everything. I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm going to tell it to have a large stroke of 24 points. And now I'm going to go ahead and design the side of my lantern however I want it to look. Now if you make a mistake sort of like I just did where this one doesn't quite reach the end, that would be a problem when we go to cut. So I'm going to grab the direct selection tool, it's the white arrow. I'm going to click out of here so I know that I don't have anything selected and I'm going to go find the end anchor right there on this line segment and I can just click and drag it to make sure it reaches all the way through here. Then I can go back to my line tool and maybe I'll add maybe one more line. Just like that. So now, get my selection tool, I'm going to get everything selected I'm going to go to the top of the screen in the object menu and I'm going to go to expand. 
leave fill and stroke checked and press OK. And now with everything still selected, I'm going to go ahead and press the Unite button to unite all of these shapes. Just like that. At this point, I have the whole thing selected. And I want to go up and I want to tell it to have a stroke of 0 0.001. This is really important so the laser cutter knows to actually cut along the outline of this shape. I also have to change the color of the stroke, which is right here. So it says hold shift key to bring up alternate color UI. I'm going to hold down shift and click. And what has to happen is the R in the RGB menu, we need to have full on red, which means 255 red, 0 green, 0 blue. If you use hexadecimal, it's also FF0000. Either one of those ways works. And now, when the laser cutter sees this file, it will actually cut the outline. At this point, you have a couple options. If you'd like to design separate sides for every side of the lantern, you could actually undo a few steps and duplicate this thing before you actually drew the lines. You could also, if you wanted to keep the sides the same on all four sides, you could just duplicate the whole thing right now. So I could do a control C and control V, and I can just bring them next to each other like this. Um, and for the sake of being concise on the video, I, I obviously didn't do the, uh, the bottom piece, but you need to go back and also do the bottom piece um, with, its own, with its own unique design. Okay, so I think I said a few seconds ago that you need to go back and design the bottom. That doesn't make any sense. So I've just sort of copied and pasted the bottom back into the document, and I have added a black fill so we can see it. And I have made sure that the stroke around the shape is also 0 0.001, and that the color is completely red. Because uh, the bottom is just going to be the bottom, and we just need to cut out that shape. So now you can just go ahead and save your file as an Illustrator file, and we're ready to bring it over to the laser cutter.